The movie begins in 1958 in a FIFA World Cup game between Brazil and the USSR. The stadium is filled with a huge crowd of spectators, ready to watch the much-awaited game. At the same time, the commentary talks negatively about the Brazilian football team. The scene shifts to a locker room where a 17-year-old young Pelé sits nervously, waiting for the game to begin. He is the youngest player to ever play in the World Cup. Following this, the movie cuts back to eight years ago in a local neighborhood of Brazil. Several children are seen playing football, and one of them is a nine-year-old Deco, who will go on to become Pele. He polishes shoes to make some money, hoping he can afford a good pair of boots one day. Deco and his mischievous group of friends are always desperate to play football. However, due to their poor living conditions, they cannot even afford a ball to play with. Thus, the boys often steal neighborhood socks and mold them into the shape of a ball to kick it around. They play the handmade football together and toss it around roof to roof without letting it touch the ground. One day, Deco is scolded by his mom for returning home dirty. He is the eldest of three children. His father, Joao Ramos, played professional football himself, but his career never brought him much in the way of money. The next scene cuts to a local pub where Dico's father and other men are gathered around to listen to a football commentary of the 1950 World Cup match between Brazil and Uruguay. Everyone is wishing Brazil to win the game as they silently listen to the commentary. Meanwhile, Dico and his friends peer through the broken roof of the pub. They are also eager to know the result of the ongoing final match. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, Brazil loses the game. Dico's father bursts into tears after learning the final results. Dico watches this from above and he too begins to cry. After Brazil's devastating loss in the 1950 final, Dico makes the bold and unlikely promise to his father that someday he will go on to win a World Cup for Brazil. The following day, Dico joins his mother to work. They are set to clean the house of a wealthy factory owner. There, his mother explains that his father struggled to earn a living as a football player after a leg injury, and that's the reason that she doesn't want Dico to play football. As his mother steps out of the room, a group of rich kids, including the house owner's son, Jose, arrives and starts talking about different football players. Dico overhears the boys discussing the local youth tournament. He also learns that a famous professional scout will be attending the tournament. Intrigued, he interrupts the boys by saying the name of a famous football player, Bele, but mispronounces it as Pele. The rich kids make fun of him, nicknaming him Pele, a name Dico initially loathes. Soon after, his mother arrives at the scene and makes him apologize to Jose, although he is not at fault. Before leaving, Dico grabs a piece of newspaper mentioning the local tournament. Later, he informs about the tournament to his friends and convinces them to participate. Wasting no time, Dico and the boys approach the organizers and enlist themselves in it. Although the boys are poor and do not even have shoes to play in the tournament, they have amazing football skills. They leave almost all the teams behind and make it to the final, only to realize that they will have to face Jose's team in the last match. Jose mocks Dico and his friends, calling them the shoeless team, as they do not have any shoes to wear. Uh, I guess no one ever said athletes were clever. The insults deeply affect Deco and his team. Oh, that's weird. So, they decide to get the shoes. However, they have no money. Suddenly, one of them comes up with a plan to steal stacks of peanuts from nearby vendors and sell them to get secondhand shoes. The boys immediately agree and proceed with their plan. During the act, the vendors notice Deco and his friends stealing their peanut sacks, and thus a chase ensues. Thankfully, the boys manage to outsmart them and reach the market while selling the peanuts. Jose and his group approach Deco and start making fun of his team once again. This time, however, Deco has had it. So, he punches Jose in anger. One thing leads to another, and the two sets of groups get into a massive brawl. Later, at home, Deco's mother is worried to see her son all bruised up. She asks him what happened, and Deco simply lies that it was his teacher who did the beating. Uh-oh. This infuriates his mother, so she promises to talk to the teacher the next day. However, Deco's father interrupts and says that he will deal with the teacher and insists that she focus on her work. The next day, he takes Deco to work. On the way, he reveals that he knows about the fight and the tournament, but instead of getting angry, Deco's father suggests he put aside his feelings and focus on his skills to win the final game. He advises his young wannabe football player son that if he wants to play professionally, he can't be ashamed of who he is. Knowing his father is by his side, Deco becomes happy and determined to play his best in the tournament. The big day finally arrives, and everybody is cheering up for Jose and his team of rich boys. Once again, the arrogant boy makes fun of Deco and continues calling him Pele. Meanwhile, Deco and his team finally wear the secondhand shoes they bought by selling the stolen peanuts. However, 
the boots are too big for the young boys. Once the match starts, Deco and his friends are slowed by their oversized boots. Jose's team takes this as an opportunity, so they score goal upon goal, making the score 6 0. The most goals scored in one game in the history of all soccer. As the match progresses, Deco gets angry when the opponents begin to play foul, and Jose continues to tease him. But just when he is about to attack Jose in a fit of rage, he sees his father in the audience and recalls what he had said the other day. Deco then decides to take off the uncomfortable football boot to ease himself and play football as they did in the streets. He takes the ball, dodges over his opponents, just dangles their asses silly, and surprises the crowd with his amazing skills, scoring the first goal. Soon after this, all of his teammates begin to take off the oversized boots and play the game their own way. Deco and his team dominate the game as they pass the ball through their opponents. Thanks to Deco's showcase of incredible skills, his team almost pulls off a dramatic comeback. By the end, they manage to push the score to 6-5. They lose the game because of time constraints. However, everyone is mesmerized by Deco and his team's game, so they give a standing ovation to them. Everyone begins to chant his name as Pele. Soon after the tournament, Deco and his friends spot the vendors from whom they had stolen peanuts the other day. The young boys begin to run away and go into the forests. However, one of his friends trips over a branch and hurts his leg. Deco helps him and takes him to a small cave nearby. Suddenly, it starts to rain heavily, and this triggers a landslide above the cave that the boys are sheltering in. Deco, whom we will now address as Pele, manages to get out. However, the injured friend is stuck inside the cave, which is soon overpowered by the landslide. In the next scene, the vendors arrive and dig the boy out. Unfortunately, he is already dead by the time he is rescued. A distressed Pele returns home and sobbingly explains everything to his mother. He blames himself for the death of his dear friend. For days, Pele remains shut and continues to blame himself for the tragic accident. To distract him, his father takes Pele to his workplace. There, he shows his son some football tricks by playing with some mangoes. Initially, Pele ignores his father for some days, but later starts joining him and practicing with the mangoes cut to some years later. Pele is now 15 years old and continues to assist his father in janitorial work while practicing with mangoes during break time. One day, his mother notices him practicing with his father and finally realizes Pele's passion for football. She decides to call a professional scout named Waldemar de Brito to watch him play. When Pele returns home, he is happy to see de Brito waiting for him. De Brito, also a former member of the Brazilian national football team, suggests Pele participate in the trials of the local football team. De Brito eventually convinces Pele's family to let the budding phenom leave home and try out for Santos FC, a professional football club. In the next scene, Pele begins his professional training with Santos FC. However, it becomes difficult for him to adapt to the European style of playing. During practice, he starts out poorly and is even scolded by his coach a couple of times. Discouraged by his play, Pele decides to return home and continue working with his father. In the train station, De Brito approaches the young boy and inquires what is the reason behind his sudden departure. Pele replies that he thinks his way of playing is not accepted in the club, and even the coach isn't satisfied with his performance. De Brito explains that his way of playing football is considered the Jenga style, which was famous during the era of slavery. The slaves used to practice a self-defense art form of the same to defend themselves from their cruel masters. They fled to the forests and continued practicing Jenga. After slavery was abolished, the slaves found out that their Jenga style was no more in use. Therefore, in order to preserve it, they used the style to play street-style football. Ever since then, Jenga has been in practice. However, Brazilians blamed Jenga style to be the cause of the loss in the 1950 World Cup. This is why most coaches want to train youngsters, according to traditional and European-style football techniques. De Brito then suggests Pele stay and prove to the world his talent, or return home as a coward. After he leaves, Pele thinks for a while and eventually decides to continue training with Santos FC. The next day, he starts off poorly as he is asked by the coach to play according to the game plan. However, the match doesn't work in his team's favor, so Pele is scolded by his coach and looked down on by his teammates. Suddenly, the young player recalls his father's advice and how he practiced with mangoes. He also sees De Brito cheering for him, so Pele decides to play the game the way he knows. Soon after, Pele gets the ball and dodges through his opponents. He then and kicks the ball acrobatically, like how he used to with the mangoes. In this way, Pele scores the first professional goal of his career at the age of 15. His coach, along with the spectators, are surprised to see Pele's amazing skills. As the days pass, Pele continues to play with other teams across the country and make a name for himself, despite being the youngest player to participate in a professional tournament. Surprisingly, he moves up from the youth squad to the reserve squad and eventually works his way up to the professional level team. His orthodox 
Bulldogs' Jenga style of play is of great concern to his coach, but he can't argue with results as Pele leads the team to several victories. One day, Pele decides to give a surprise visit to his parents and also bring along some gifts to the family. He gifts a radio to his father, and they decide to listen to the announcement of the national squad for the 1958 World Cup. Pele doesn't believe that he will be selected as he is too young to play in the national team. But despite this, they decide to listen to the announcement, and to their surprise, Pele gets selected. In the next scene, Pele joins the national team, and everyone seems to be friendly. However, the reporters there begin to question Brazil's style of playing. They even make fun of the Jenga style, calling it outdated and boring. To make matters worse, the national football coach also confronts Pele and warns him against playing the Jenga style of football. The following day, Pele decides to play the traditional European style of football, as suggested by his coach. However, it becomes difficult for him to adapt to this style. In the process, he trips and hurts his knee. That's okay, he's just diving. When the doctor examines him, he points out that Pele might be ruled out of the World Cup due to his injury. Later that night, an upset Pele rings his mother to inform the family about the recent incident and the likeliness of him not being able to play in the World Cup. However, his mother tells him to have faith and advises him to take care of himself. The 1958 World World Cup finally begins, and the Brazilian team manages to win a couple of starting games. However, due to the brutality of the matches, several teammates are injured. Therefore, the coach is left with no choice but to ask an unfit Pele to play the ongoing match. Initially scared, Pele makes a couple of excuses, but the coach forces him to play for the country. Before the players head to the field, the coach once again reminds Pele to play traditional European-style football, or else. Soon, Pele joins his teammate on the ground, and they barely make it past the USSR to reach the semi-final with France. In the semi-final, the Brazilian team is utterly dominated, and France even manages to score a goal. During the interval, Pele looks upset as he notices the injured players in the dressing room. Demotivated, he asks one of them to replace him in the second half. However, the teammate refuses and reveals that he is not in a sound mental state to play the game. Additionally, he tells Pele that he is tired of playing European-style football and further suggests Pele play the Jenga style so that he can truly showcase his skills and hopefully win the game. Bolstered by his teammate's support, Pele erupts onto the field with his Jenga style of play. He displays remarkable speed, athleticism, and field vision to score three goals in a semi-final 5-2 demolition of France. A few days later, during a press meeting between the two finalists' teams, Brazil and Sweden, the Swedish coach mocks Brazil's Jenga style of playing and says that they will lose the World Cup final just as they did in 1950. Frustrated, Brazil's coach storms out of the meeting. At night, Pele rings his father to inform him about the situation, but the latter advises him to try to unite his teammates so they can win the match. The following day during breakfast, Pele challenges his teammates to kick the ball to the nearest lighthouse without dropping it. Thus, this would need teamwork. The teammates reluctantly agree, and they start kicking the football without touching the ground. Upon seeing this, the coach realizes he was wrong for teaching the boys traditional European formations and later confronts them. He suggests the team play the Jenga style in the final and show the world the Brazilian way of playing football. It's the World Cup Final, and the Brazilians all around have eyes on their TV for the live show of the match. On the ground, the match begins, and surprisingly, the Swedish team manages to score the first goal within four minutes of the game. Pele is continuously sidelined by the opponents, as it turns out their big game plan is to stop Pele from getting the ball. However, the Brazilian team maintains their form, and soon after, Pele gets the ball and shoots an incredible goal. And then, the team nets four more to make it a final 5-2 win over Sweden. With this, Brazil wins for the first time in a World Cup. Pele's teammates storm onto the field to congratulate him and lift him up onto their shoulders. The scene then shifts to the real moment when Brazil won the final in 1958. Pele is cheered by his teammates. In the final scene, it is revealed that the Brazilian president declared Pele a national treasure. In 1961, the GOAT of football holds the remarkable record for most goals scored and is also the youngest player to score a goal in a World Cup. He is also the only player to win three FIFA World Cups. Pele passed away on December 28, 2022, 10 days after the 2022 FIFA World Cup. His last post was a congratulatory message to another icon of football, Lionel Messi. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.